Hey everyone, and welcome back. Today we're going to be painting the horrific looking Dryder by Norse's Marvelous Miniatures. This is going to be a fairly quick and simple paint job. We'll be laying some base colours with the airbrush, finishing up with some brushwork, but we can play around with some interesting colours to make it as creepy as we can. The steps will be as follows. First we'll do a basic Xenothal Prime, second we will fill in the spider body and apply some shading, and then we will paint the upper body and shade that, with the final step being to come back and apply some final highlights. First, we'll Xenothal Prime the figure to establish some easy highlights, and then we'll paint the figure in parts. For this I am using Stano Res Black Primer, Cold Grey by Vallejo, and Loquitex White Ink. These are my go-tos for Xenothal, and you'll see me using them almost every time I have to do it. So you might be asking why we need to prime this, because if you know these miniatures, they are sold as pre-primed and ready to paint. But in my own experience, like resealable packaging and spreadable butter, it is a bit of a lie. I always run into issues with these minis, and the primer they put on at the factory just seems uneven, and I always end up with paint flaking off when I'm done. So my first step is always to reprime it and let it cure fully for 24 hours. Once that's done, we can come in with the cold grey and white ink as usual to highlight 45 degrees and 90 degrees. With that done, we're ready to start painting the lower body. For the legs, we'll be using hex lichen and cold grey, with some colour shifts in the middle to gory red and squid pink, all by Vallejo. For the shadows and tips of the legs, we'll push them into brown using brown ink by De Laroni, and we'll use Vallejo red ink to put some final highlights onto the body. I wanted the legs and skin tones to be quite purple on this figure, so I start by coming in with just pure purple, which is the Hex Lichen, just to get the colours where I want them. Next we can apply the brown ink to the abdomen and shadows of the figure, this goes straight over the zenithal prime, making sure we get right into the recessed areas where it will blend in with the legs. The zenithal highlight we did earlier does a very good job of showing us the light and shadow beneath the brown ink. Now I want to tint the abdomen a little bit more, so I am going to come in over the brown ink with red ink sprayed directly from above. With that dry, we can work on these purple highlights, and for this I'm using a mixed colour of Hex Lichen and Cold Grey, they are mixed one to one. And I want to push the highlights a little bit further, so I'm going to bring it up next with Squid Pink around the leg joints, before coming in with Gory Red. If I just come in with red before the pink, it's not really going to show up because the colour underneath is still the very dark purple. If we lighten it underneath first, then the red will start to appear. Now we can move on to some shading, and it is time for the first wash, which will be our lord and saviour, Non-Oil. 
we can apply this to the entire mini and just wait for it to dry, it's the easiest step. And this will pick out all of the details and shadows that we missed before, then moving on to the human abdomen. Next we can begin the upper body, and for the first quick coat here we'll be mixing Payne's Grey Ink and Cold Grey by Vallejo, and then we'll use the other colours to bring in highlights on the flesh, hair, metal and leather. Vallejo Metal Steel and Silver are again my go-tos for this, with Beastie Brown, Stonewall Grey and Pale Flesh by Scale 75 and Vallejo to finish things up. Payne's Grey is an ink that I really like to mix into other paints. It is a dark blue-grey. Um, and it's just great to kind of shift a colour in that direction. So here I'm mixing it with the cold grey two to one, so two drops of cold grey paint, one drop of ink, and we'll then paint everything on the upper body with this paint just to give us a base coat. At this point I decided I want to bring out the brown from the abdomen into the legs a little bit just to give some harmony to the colours in the mini. So I'm coming back in with the brown ink and just picking out these little dots on the tops of the legs. The next step is to come back in with metallics, so for the armour plates and scale mail we'll just cover them straight with steel paint. For the skin, we can thin down this pink flesh by a scale 75 a lot. Coloured water is what we want, so a glaze-like consistency. Um, at least kind of five to six parts water to one part paint, maybe more than that. And I guess to get the result here, you want to think that it's not doing anything when you apply it. That's the consistency that we're looking for. But that's precisely the point, because I want a very soft application of this colour and I want a lot of control and to bring this up in layers. So we're going to have to repeat this three, four, five times. For the leather parts of the armour, we can come back in with Beastie Brown. And for leather, I normally prefer this colour to the actual leather brown that Vallejo make, because this is a, a warmer, kind of more red shade of leather. The leather brown out the bottle is it has a lot of yellow in it and it's just not to my taste is all I can say about it. Um, I tend to like my leather colours a little bit warmer um, and mix in red or orange. We can also paint the leather wraps of the swords as well. And finally with Stonewall Grey we can pick out a few strands of hair to highlight on the top of the head. When that's dried, we can come in and shade the upper body, and we're going to use two washes here, non-oil and druggy violet. The metal parts that we did with steel are going to get non-oil, I don't know if there's such a thing as too much non-oil, and the skin is going to get druggy violet. The druggy violet wash is quite strong, but on a figure of this scale, I want that strong tone it's going to leave behind. The, the mini, compared to something like the bigger ones that you can get, um, Giants or the Yinigu that I painted in another video, this mini isn't really big enough to cast its own shadows on the face, so the wash is going to have to do most of the work here. And I'm not painting eyes, 
eyes is a very personal thing, and I feel, for me, what works is that for something of this scale, there's not a lot of point. Um, the eyes are going to be shadowed anyway, I would rather just save what little is left of my sanity and leave them unpainted, and honestly guys, nobody is probably ever going to notice when it's on a table that the eyes have not been painted. So this is our final step. We want to hit the tops of the metal parts of the silver, so the upper portions of the sword and the armour. We're going to touch up the hair with stonewall grey, and then we'll do a dry brush of Mars Orange on the body. To paint the base, we will use the same Payne's Grey and Cold Grey mix from earlier. I just like that as a colour. Our first step is going to be picking out the very tops of the sword blades, the handles, the braces, all of the things where the light would be hitting it from above with the silver paint. Next we can come back in with Stonewall Grey and pick out two or three or four strands of hair that we want to stand out. Now it's time for the dry brush with Mars Orange, and just to give you an idea, this is quite a small brush that I'm using. And then it's onto the base, very carefully, just with a brush, applying the mix of cold grey and ink. And there we have it, a relatively quick paint job, all things considered, but it's a cool figure and I wanted to share what I did with it. If you have questions, please put them in the comments below, otherwise I'll see you next time, and thank you for watching.